You're looking at scenes there from the New York City subway system. Last night, uh, we saw flooding across the city as well as the tri-state area as remnants of Hurricane Ida led to record rainfall across the region. More than a dozen people have now been killed. Transportation, communities brought to a halt with some of that record of rainfall. Let's bring in Kim Cobb, Georgia Tech Earth and Atmospheric Sciences Professor and Global Change Program Director. And Kim, it's great to have you back on the show because you warned precisely about these extreme weather events becoming more and more frequent in that UN climate report that you helped co-author last month. If you look specifically at Hurricane Ida, how much of that can we peg directly to climate change? Well, the new United Nations report really highlights new and stronger links between ongoing warming across the world and these classes of extreme rainfall. The report also calls out a trend in the intensity of tropical storms like Hurricane Ida across the world and notes that it is very unlikely due to natural variability. So when we see this storm raking across the country, we can understand that both of those pieces uh, have been tied to climate change and ongoing warming with this new report. And when you talk about the increased frequency of this, I mean, this is really just in August. We're we're really not even at the tail end of the hurricane season. How much more of these weather events are we likely to see? If yesterday was sort of a good barometer, how should we be looking about the frequency of these events increasing as temperatures continue to warm? Well, I think the recent years have really helped us understand just what we could be facing when we're thinking about year-on-year events and losses of this potential magnitude. And this is in our recent memory. So uh, this is something that climate scientists look at over a period of decades. We can draw on our own personal experience to understand what this means on the ground. We can read the words and one thing, but to see these images like are happening today in New York City, quite another. We know that each additional increment of warming will drive an increase in the frequency intensity of these kinds of climate and weather extremes, uh, droughts, wildfires, uh, extreme rainfall and flooding. And again, these tropical storms, uh, a subject of intense study as well. It really did feel like uh, if you're looking specifically at New York City, a lot of the officials were caught off guard at the severity of the flooding that we saw. We saw subway systems getting flooded, uh, buses trying to wade through water, uh, obviously a lot of people um, being stranded in their cars as those waters were rising. How do you think city officials now plan for reinforcements, infrastructure in the face of the intensity of these storms? Well, I think one thing is very clear. We are moving into uncharted territory here with climate change. Uh, The climate that we've been living in is not going to be the climate that we are living in right now, nor over the next decades. Um, These rains were record breaking by a long shot. Uh, reminds me of the kind of shattering heat waves that we saw at the Pacific Northwest earlier this summer. Just just jaw-dropping. Uh, officials can be forgiven for uh, not having uh, really thought about what kinds of extremes they could be facing with climate change. The science is now clear, however, and through events like this, we understand just the magnitude of the challenges that we'll face with infrastructure uh, now and going forward. Now, certainly there are ways to embrace the science that we know in turning to designing of climate-smart, climate-friendly, uh, climate smart and uh, climate ready cities and communities across this country. But of course, there's going to be a limit to how much we can limit the damages of this type of most damaging climate extreme. In a city like New York, though, where the subway is already aging, there's been plenty of debate about the lack of updates that have been done over the years. I mean, what can be done if we're talking about storms that are coming in things getting flooded out. I mean, what are the reinforcements that you think can be realistically be done alongside these weather events that will continue to come through? Well, you know, certainly I'm not a a city planner, uh, but one of the things we do know is that these classes of extreme rainfall have gotten worse. It's already in the data. Uh, Now we're we're living through some of these new records in real time and grappling with those kinds of choices. Um, Thinking about uh, things like pumps that have been installed in other cities. Of course, levees, uh, an active discussion, not so much for a storm like this, but for a sea level rise, which is also a 
uh, an ongoing and future threat to um, low-lying areas uh, like Manhattan. And so we're, we're thinking really about the need to look very forward in time and look into the science and ask ourselves, uh, what kinds of risks should we be preparing for? We should have been preparing for this 10 or 20 years ago when this was firmly on the horizon. Right now, uh, caught, being caught off guard and having to scramble. But again, there are limits to how that much this infrastructure can adapt to uh, weather a storm like this. And that points to the need to enact the kind of deep and sustained emissions reductions that will limit future climate risk and loss by mid-century. We have locked in another couple tens of degrees Celsius, but our choices in the next 10 or 20 years will determine how hot it gets by mid-century, how much climate weather extremes will come along with that warming, and of course, if we want to reserve the right to cool uh, in the latter part of the century. And finally, Kim, this is something you've been studying for a very long time, and we're talking about Hurricane Ida today, but of course, there have been... uh, fires over in California, the west uh, along the coast. We saw fires breaking out along the Mediterranean over in Europe, uh, the flooding in China. When you look at the events that we've seen play out this year, what surprised you the most? Well, I think just how jaw-dropping some of these climate extremes are, and unfortunately, how much loss comes along with them. And when we look at the United Nations report that was just released, uh, it calls out the Western United States as an area of prolonged heat-related drought and fire-prone weather. It calls out areas like the Mediterranean as drought-prone, fire-prone areas. Uh, And this is the kind of actionable information that the report contains on a region by region by region level. And these kinds of events provide important moments for uh, kind of internalizing just how much risk we have uh, embraced with the um, pace of emissions reductions to date and just how much risk will be baked into our economy, uh, into national security concerns, into loss of lives and livelihoods going forward if we don't take dramatic action right now.